do it right. Yo. First off, what the heck is a derivative? Subprime lender ended by a partisan. Student loan debt must be forgiven because we've been trespassed upon by the trespassers. Get them. You want to talk occupation? This country's been occupied. I'm Steve Lamb. I'm here with the Center for Progressive Urban Politics, where we discuss not only the problems and what's wrong with the world, but the possible solutions. We're excited today. We're interviewing Ellen Brown, who is one of the foremost authors on finances and global finances in the country. So Ellen, it's a pleasure to actually meet you in person. Oh, thanks. It's great to get to talk to you. Yeah. Uh, you've written 12 books over the years. Uh, Ten of them have been on health. and. Two of them, the most recent books, have, have been on finances. Um, your first book, called Web of Debt, was all about the creation of money through debt in the Federal Reserve System. Um, and it's, it's a fascinating read. I actually read it. And then we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later. This is your, your newest book, which is on basically the solution to our problem. And at the Center for Progressive Urban Politics, we're all about solutions. And it's uh, public banks as opposed to private banks, which we'll talk about later. But right now, I wanted to ask you about, um, we're, we're in January of 2014. We just had what's called a G, uh, 2015, yeah, time flies. Um, we just had a G20 conference. Um, and can you tell us what the G20 are and what the outcome of the conference was? Mm -hmm. Well, the G20 are the 20 large industrialized nations. Um, they were the G7 in mm -hmm. 1998 when they first formed something called the Financial Stability Forum. This was after the Asian crisis of 1997-98. And so the um, Financial Stability Forum was to give advice. It was basically an advisory board on how to, what to do about this sort of cri prevent this sort of crisis again, make sure the banks are s safe and so forth. So How's after that worked out so far? <laughs> not so well. Yeah. So then we had the crisis of 2008. Right. And in the spring of 2009, the, the G7 had been expanded to the G20. And so in the spring of 20, uh, 2009, the G20 uh, met in London and um, all agreed to be bound by the banking regulations of something called the Financial Stability Board, which was like, you know, it was, it was, a, um, it had evolved from the Financial Stability Forum, but it was no longer just advisory. It was, these were rules that we agreed okay. to. Can I stop you just for a second there? Yeah. So Ellen, uh, this year the, the G20 have, have all the regulations that, that are going to have bank bail-ins. We've had the Cromnum, Cromnibus bill, which kind of snuck in regulations uh, in the middle of the night uh, that will allow banks to, to take their depositors' money if they're crashing. Um, why do you think there's an emphasis from the banking industry on uh, being able to, to take every asset in the system basically unto, unto, the, unto the banks themselves in, in case of default. Do you think they're perhaps maybe expecting some kind of a major financial meltdown that, that even makes 2008 look perhaps like it was a party? That is what one reads, and it certainly looks like that, that they know something we don't. They know how this derivative system works. They know how incredibly risky it is right now, that it's even riskier by far, like about twice as risky as the 2008, uh, as it was in 2008 when it collapsed. I mean, this time it's liable to be oil that's the, mm -hmm. that takes the system down. And they want to make sure that when it all collapses, they've got laws in place that allow them to grab our money. In other words, we don't, see, we can't even sue them. With these new lo laws, we can't even say, you took my money and I can sue you, take you to court for this. Like, we can't sue the people who were negligent or fraudulent in, in mishandling our funds because the law is there. It says that you are a creditor of the bank and in the event that the bank goes bankrupt, the, the bank is allowed to take its creditors' money and turn that into equity because the most important thing is to keep these banks 
solvent. And the way they make it solvent is they move, move the debt from the debt part of the balance sheet over into the equity part of the balance sheet. A neat trick, you know, it's just a, an accounting function, but what that means is that when you used to have a deposit, you know, you had money, you now have um, a, some stock in a bankrupt bank, which you may or may not be able to sell, and you certainly won't be able to pay your, your rent with it. Or your yeah. or your food or anything else with it. Well, won't, uh, <clears throat> so the logical question about that is, won't that cause a gigantic social disruption? For sure, and that's what I think that's, that's what they're preparing for, because they want to make sure that they get the goods and that we don't have any recourse, no legal, legal recourse. We can't go into court and sue them. We can't get them shut down. They're, they, too big to fail means they're too big to fail. You, we have to keep them afloat at all costs because they are keeping our financial system afloat. But in fact, so the solution to that, one possibility is Dodd-Frank, go back to what we did in the 30s, mm -hmm. reinstate those laws. Glass-Steagall, yeah. Yeah, Glass-Steagall, sorry, yeah. But, it's confusing. So but it's, you know, we ha we're we reliant on Congress for that, and they have their own internal battles. As we know, they don't seem to get much done these days. So the other alternative is just abandon that banking system. We don't need those banks. We can pull our money out and put it in our own publicly owned banks, set up our own banks that are have in their mandate, the mandate, just like the Bank of North Dakota, the mandate is we are there to pu serve the public interest, We'll make low interest loans for, well, in North Dakota, the, they partner with the local banks, so they really have very low overhead. The Bank of North Dakota itself has very little cost because mm -hmm. they don't, they've only got one branch. They don't do ATMs. Um, I imagine they only have one or two tellers in that one branch. I mean, they're not really there to cater to the, to the individual depositor. They are the depositor of the government. I mean, they are the depository of the government. They hold the government's money. So all the tax money flows into them. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Instead of going to Wall Street, which is where it goes now, and Wall Street could snatch it and say, new rules, new bail-in rules, we get, you, we, you now have equity in our bank instead of having your deposits. So the, I think those state and local governments are even more vulnerable than we are. They think that they have secured deposits. Their deposits are secured, so they're okay. But the order of bankruptcy is that the derivatives go first, then the secured deposits, which... But the derivatives, as, we, as we've discovered, the derivatives are more, potentially, more money everything. than in the entire world GDP. Right. They not only get first bite, the, they, that could be a bite that consumes the whole oh, apple. Wow. So it. So we need to just pull out of that system. We can do it quietly, you know, and then finally, when we don't need them anymore, th let them collapse. Let their derivative schemes collapse. If they want to gamble in derivatives, it's perfectly fine. We just don't want them doing it with our money. Well, it's it's a really neat game where the the table's rigged for them. I mean, they mm -hmm. they win, they win. They lose, I pay. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's a really bizarre system. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, it's hard to understand how, again, a congressman um, can sit there and, and pass that. But, you know, I, I've discovered in, in my public life, I've known a lot of, of politicians. I've discovered an amazing thing. Very often they don't read the bills they're voting on. Well, they're thousands of pages long. I mean, they can't read it. And it's intentionally long and obscure. I mean, I'm a lawyer, so I know there's two types of legal writing. One is litigation, which is what I did, where you're, you want to hit the judge over the head, you know, in the first paragraph because they're bored. If you don't get them mm -hmm. on the first page, you're probably not going to get them. Mm -hmm. And the other, where you want to be so obscure and wordy that nobody knows what you're talking about except other lawyers, hopefully the ones on your team, not the ones well, on the, the other, other team. team. A long time ago, this Italian dictator named Mussolini said that fascism was the union of the government and the corporations. But here we have something entirely different. Here we have the corporations completely and totally managing what appears to be or, or is the last vestiges of a, of a democratic republic. Uh, how do we define that? What do we name that, and, and 
what horrific danger does that pose to the public? Uh, how to define it? I'm not sure, but that's a very good point, that this is worse than what we think of fascism, because it, what Mussolini did and Hitler did, the government actually controlled the corporations. Right. What we have today is the corporations controlling the government. Right. It's just like people say about public banks, oh, you know, I don't believe in socialism, or that socialism, because the government would be, but I heard a really good response to that, which was, no, socialism is where um, the people work for the government. What we're talking about is where the government works for the people. Right, yeah. right. And we certainly don't have that now. I mean, no. we're all, the, both the government and the people are working for these for-profit corporations. And I think it's pretty clear just from the legislation that they've passed that they intend us no goodwill. Yeah. You know, I mean, how, I don't understand how a person conceives of the way to make the banking system stable at the end of the day is to make sure the bankers, no matter what they do, are made whole and the people suffer. Yeah. Well, and many people can see there's problems to it. Most people, the frustration is what do we do about it? Right. And it seems to me the first thing we have to do is quit fighting among ourselves. For even in, among the money reformers, you know, you have, there are all these little fine points and people disagree on the fine points and so they never get together in one movement. But if we could agree on certain basic principles, we all know that we want to do this, this and this and we could have a united front. Obviously, the 99% are gonna win over the 1%. They've got the money, but we've got the numbers, but we have to get the numbers in lockstep. And to do that, we need education, for starters, it seems to me. We need, everybody needs to understand what's going on and you know, agree on the basic principles. So that's one thing. Then where do we start, I think, getting back the banking system is the most important that I mean basically we want to get our money out of their system and then where do we put it we so want a first to put step it in people could system. take for example e even though it's not perfect yet a first step they could do is like get their money say out of Citibank or Morgan or whoever or Chase and uh, Bank of America get their money out of those kinds of institutions and maybe put it in a local credit union would be a start mm -hmm. The problem is that we, the little people, are not even their big, if we all pulled our deposits out, it probably wouldn't hurt them all that much, or it wouldn't affect things too much. It's the, but that would the, the protect big us. depositors. Oh yeah, no, oh, that's uh, true. I mean, it would protect, at least it yeah. would give us a little bit more protection as the little people. I mean, right. if you're a little person, you don't want your money in there. Yeah, no, I totally agree. But, but, if, you're, but if your state still has all its money in mm. Wall Street, as deposits and as the oh. pension fund is being managed by Wall Street and oh. they have it invested in Wall Street derivative things. I mean, it's always the pension funds that go down. One thing I forgot to mention about the, um, about the G20 meeting in Brisbane was a new wrinkle in the resolution mechanism that basically the bail-in mechanism is that before they get down to the deposit level, they will be taking these bonds. So it goes, they take the stocks first, the shareholders' money first, then the bondholders, then the, then the creditors, the other creditors, including the depositors. So the bondholders, now they, they have to have um, a rather large percentage of their cap capital in the form of what are called bail-in, bail-inable bonds. In other words, those bonds will be turned into equity in the event of a bankruptcy. Well, the catch is the pension funds are who own these bonds. Virtually the only investors, in long-term investors in these pension funds are the, I mean, sorry, these bonds are the pension funds and the insurance funds. Funds. Oh, so the so whole country us. has no pension and the it's whole country has again. no insurance. Yeah, they're going to take our pensions as well as our deposits. A and our insurance. Yeah, and our insurance, <laughs> yeah. Wow. And so, once again, the answer to that really is get your money out of the big bank. Yeah. Try but to get we've your got state to get out. our governor's money out, too. Yeah. Get your state to, to take its tax money and put it in a state bank. Mm -hmm. um, or a city bank or a county bank. Could be done. I mean, North Dakota is the size of, I think it's something like one fourteenth of the size of LA County. 
So you're in LA City, you know, is definitely bigger than North Dakota population wise. Could the county of Los Angeles open its own? Could definitely. The, the, could so county should. county governments, actually, not just state governments, but county governments could open their own banks legally? Mm -hmm. Okay. So like if, if I wrote to my county supervisor, I think I have the same supervisor you do, Supervisor mm -hmm. Antonovich, I, I could write to him and, and everyone else could write to their county supervisor and encourage them to open a bank to deposit their own tax income into? Mm -hmm. And they would save a lot of money in many other ways. They'd save all those fees that are going to Wall Street. You know, wait, 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 wait. My, my county deposits their tax money in, in, into a bank and they have to pay a fee? Well, they pay fees for managing, they pay all kinds of fees for like uh, bond issues and bond. and for investing. They, they These people that invest your money, they take a big, big fee oh, for that. They so wouldn't there was need to pay, they wouldn't, when they, when they do a bond, they wouldn't need to borrow the money because they would have the tax money already sitting in, in their bank. Right, and they can do like all, banks do, which is leverage their money. In other words, they can lend the same money that's still sitting there that they can spend. To, in a, the way they do that is they borrow it from another bank at 0.25%. I mean, if the borrower and the depositor come for their money at the same time. And because they own the bank, they get to keep the interest. Oh, so, they so they save 50% on the cost of public projects because over the cost, on average, the cost of public pr projects is 50% the interest. And well, and plus they would save just the 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 ten percent off the top. Well, they'd save nine and a half of the ten percent off the top, that goes to the to the people who originate the bonds. Because like when they get a bond, uh, there's a ten percent fee that go or five to ten percent yeah. dependent goes right off the top. Goes goes back to the back to Wall Street. Back mm -hmm. to Wall Street. So they would save that just right off the top, mm -hmm. and and then they would save all the interest over the thirty years of of the life of the bond. Mm -hmm. Oh. That's like a fortune. That's like exactly like the, billions of dollars. Right. The state of California has sixty billion dollars sitting in a treasurer's investment pool. These are like rainy day funds from all over the state, currently earning zero point two three percent interest. So you could take all that money. You would have a gigantic bank if you took all that money and put it in your state-owned bank. Part of it, a little bit as capital, but the rest just as deposits, as CDs. Mm -hmm. Pay them a little more than 0.23%. They'd be happy, you know, pay them 0.3 or 0.5%. Right. And then you can lend, lend that to yourself. I mean, instead of paying 8% or whatever they pay on, well, I think maybe they pay 5%. 5%. Different, now, yeah. depending on the type of bond, yeah. So so you save that, or you can, you can actually pay that on your bonds, but because you owe, own the bank, or on your loans, you can pay the interest so that people don't right. get all so upset that they're not charging interest. You know, we fight, we're charging 5% to ourselves, and then you get to keep the 5%. That's the way it is in North Dakota. The bank keeps the interest. It goes to the state of North Dakota, and it, they give a really nice um, dividend to the state every year. Well, that's huge, and I mean, cities can do this too. So, like Pasadena could have their own bank. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I do have sort of a slight concern about county mm -hmm. and and city banks. Um, in Ellen, in, in the city just south of where I live in Pasadena, they just had a uh, or they're undergoing a scandal right now where a guy was in charge of a uh, program. There's a special utility tax, and the the city kept all the money. And this utility tax was for undergrounding utilities, and they were supposed to subsidize the undergrounding of these utilities. And this guy has been stealing money out of this account, allegedly, uh, for the last several years, and they say he's stolen six and a half million dollars out of this account. Um, don't we have to worry about that with, say, state, county, or city banks, uh, the whole problem of bureaucratic corruption? Well, the difference is that you have full accountability for a publicly owned entity of any sort. So there are in the Bank of North Dakota, for example, is audited three different ways. Oh, and every year? you don't ha have that with private entities. They're not that, 
well, of course, I, I guess they do check their books and so forth, but they do all this off-book off accounting that we don't really, can't really. Off-book accounting, what's that? Off-balance sheet accounting, you know, where they, well, it's like the repos. So I started to say what they do with your deposits, say J.P. Morgan has all this money sitting, they call it excess reserves or excess deposits, and they use that to buy federal securities. And the federal securities are just sitting there on the books. It looks very sound and safe. You know, that's collateral for the, for the state and local government deposits, for example. But they use those securities. They can rehypothecate them, which means they can lend them several times over in the repo market. Okay. So, they're, so they're sitting there in the, during the day on the books, but they're in, in this um, off-balance sheet activity they're being used as collateral for something else and they use it several times over so that sort of thing would just it would be totally open to public scrutiny and anybody could look at the books on the internet and well it's a very interesting thing when when people are doing odd stuff and it comes under public scrutiny they sort of kind of stop doing that because they get real tired of answering all the questions from annoying people who are filing FOIA requests and stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so how do people get in touch with, with you and, and with your efforts to start uh, state banks? Um, my own website is ellenbrown.com or okay. webofdebt.com. And um, I'm founder of the Public Banking Institute, which is at publicbankinginstitute.org. Okay, and if people go there, they can find information on how oh, yeah, that works and how they can plug in and get involved and, and maybe, mm -hmm. you know, how they can, if you're in California, how you can write Jerry Brown and encourage him to do the right thing. And uh, that's awesome. It's a pleasure okay. talking to you. Nice talking to you. Thanks. Let's talk about occupation. What we face and make us think this 90% of the nation's paper trapped in 10% of traders and rapists. It's not too late for changing. We need 100% of your faces. We are the 99%. We challenge in the 1%. From whatever hell of heaven you've been sent. We need 100%. You want to talk?